German reunification is often seen as one of the definitive events that marked the end of the Cold War. Yet, something seldom discussed with respect to German unification is how many people across the world not only opposed a reunified Germany, but did so fiercely. Now, the biggest long-term opponent to German reunification was the USSR, since the last time Germany had been whole, Great Patriotic War. Every leader of the USSR had strongly opposed any notion of a united Germany, and by the 1980s there being two Germanys was a simple fact of life. So a quick overview. Germany, since the end of the Second World War, had lost territory and been split into two states. The Capitalist Democratic Federal Republic of Germany, also known as West Germany, and the German Democratic Republic, known as East Germany, which was a communist Soviet puppet state. In the mid-1980s, Mikhail Gorbachev became the General Secretary of the USSR, and due to internal economic and social problems, his attention was turned elsewhere. He introduced reforms across the USSR and took a much more hands-off approach to its puppet states in the Eastern Bloc. In 1989, the communist regimes in Eastern Europe started to collapse. As East Germany's rulers began to lose their grip on power, the notion of German reunification was put forward by West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. Gorbachev was busy trying to keep the Soviet Union together and so reluctantly acquiesced to German reunification. However, it should be noted that Gorbachev was under the impression that a united Germany would leave NATO and become a neutral nation. So, with the USSR's blessing, the primary obstacle to reunification was out of the way, right? Well, no. In the West, support for German reunification wasn't exactly common. The exception to this was the USA, which under President George H.W. Bush was extremely supportive of a united Germany. Whereas in Western Europe, many were suspicious and quite concerned about German reunification. West Germany was already the largest economy in Western Europe, and if it were to incorporate the East, Germany's lead would increase massively. For France, led by President Francois Mitterrand, German reunification could potentially derail his and Kohl's efforts to bring about much greater levels of European integration. As such, the price for France's blessing would be Germany signing up to a brand new European currency, instead of continuing with the use of the strong Deutschmark. Italy's Prime Minister, Giulio Andriotti, summed up many people's views quite well when he said, I love Germany so much, I prefer to see two of them. So in the West, by far the biggest opponent to German reunification was Britain, led by Margaret Thatcher. Thatcher feared that a reunified Germany would economically dominate the continent. She was also worried that Germany would seek to forcibly retake the territories it had lost after the Second World War. Thus, she petitioned Gorbachev to increase the number of Soviet soldiers in East Germany in order to better resist its reunification. In the end, though, events overtook the politicians and Germany was, by popular demand, reunited on July 1st, 1990. It was agreed that the current German-Polish border would be permanent and that Germany would remain a member of NATO and that East Germany would never host nuclear weapons. And that was that. Just remember that this reunification wasn't without its opponents. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with extra thanks to my patrons that you see on screen now. And a special thanks to James Bizonet, David Archaeologist, Azaka Flash, Party Boyko, Rob Waterhouse, Yashar N. Naman, Chris Wicker, Miles Bailey Brendgard, Michael Reynolds, Gustav Swan, Toonrick, Onion Duck, Maggie Paxkowski, Winston Kaywood, Vasily Aravidis, Anthony Beckett, Adam Harvey, Ike, Sky Chappelle and the Amusement Archives.